Welcome back to the Youth Bible in One Year, day 19. My first question to you today is, what is your most valuable possession? What's the, the most precious thing that you own? Have a think about that and think about how bad it would hurt if you lost that thing, say in a, a house fire or in some other way, if you just lost it. Well, in today's devotion, we see what the most valuable thing to God is in this world. Raj was one of six children born into a wealthy Brahmin family, the highest caste in the Indian caste system. At the age of 23, Raj encountered Jesus. His family disinherited him. They cut him off. As far as they were concerned, he was dead. They even held a funeral service for him. Neither his parents nor his brothers and sisters have ever spoken to him again. For several weeks, he wandered around the streets of Bangalore. He had virtually no food to eat. He walked all day and slept in the park at night. He started a new life. He began to speak about his newfound faith. Through him, many other people encountered Jesus. For several years, he was the national director of Alpha in India. He says that he's had a blessed life and that God has more than compensated for his losses. Although he left everything, in Jesus Christ, he found the pearl of great value. Relationships are our most valuable possession, but there is one special relationship for which you were created. This is the most valuable pearl of all. It's worth selling everything in order to get hold of it. From Psalm 11 In the Lord I take refuge, for the Lord is righteous. He loves justice. The upright will see his face. The intimate presence of God. Even at the most difficult time of your life, you can experience the intimate presence of God. David was in a crisis. He was advised to run away and hide in the mountains. His response was to say, I've already run for dear life straight to the arms of God, so why would I run away now? David starts by saying, In the Lord I take refuge. He also finishes by focusing on a relationship with God, with the promise that the upright will see his face. David uses metaphorical language to paint a picture of the intimate presence of the Lord. His experience and desire for a relationship with God brackets the beginning and end of the psalm. There is no safer place, nothing more valuable in life, and nothing that this world offers that can compare with the intimate presence of God, seeing His face. Lord, today I want to see Your face. I ask You to satisfy the deepest longings of my heart with your intimate presence. New Testament from Matthew 13 His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid us again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Knowing God's Son Some people are desperately searching and then find Jesus. Others, like me, almost stumble into finding him. But once you've found the treasure, it's worth giving up everything else. In between the parable of the weeds and the parable of the net, Jesus tells two very short parables about discovering the kingdom. The only difference between the two is that in one case, the person was actively searching, and the other, he seemed to stumble across it. In both, there is something of enormous value, treasure, fine pearls. In both cases, it was worth selling everything to get it. This is where true joy, real treasure and great value are to be found. The kingdom of heaven is all about knowing the king. It's all about Jesus and how you respond to him. 
How everyone responds to Jesus really matters both for this life and beyond. When you consider all the evil in the world, do you ever wonder why God does not deal with it straight away and get rid of it? In the parable of the weeds, the servant wants to pull up the weeds, but his master refuses. A judgment will come. He warns about the fate of those who cause sin and all who do evil. He says of the weeds that God will pitch them in the trash and that he will cut the bad fish and throw them in the garbage. He promises on that day that you, the righteous, made right with God through Jesus, will shine like the sun in the kingdom of your Father. It is your relationship with God that causes you to shine, and it means that one day you will shine like the sun in the kingdom of God. But God won't allow the destruction of all that is evil yet. He wants to gather all the wheat into his barn, He deliberately allows a delay until the end of the age so that more people have time to respond to the good news about Jesus. Lord, thank you that a relationship with you is the pearl of great value. Keep me close to you and help me to avoid anything that draws me away from our relationship. Old Testament from Genesis 38 and 39 As she was being brought out, she sent a message to her father-in-law. I am pregnant by the man who owns these, she said. Judah recognized them and said, She is more righteous than I. So Potiphar left everything he had in Joseph's care. Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. One day, she caught him by his cloak and said, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. She kept his cloak beside her until his master came home. Then she told him this story. That Hebrew slave you brought us came to me to make sport of me. When his master heard the story his wife told him, saying, This is how your slave treated me, he burned with anger. Joseph's master took him and put him in prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warder. So the warder put Joseph in charge of all those held in the prison, and he was made responsible for all that was done there. Experiencing God's Blessing Are your circumstances far from ideal at the moment? Do you feel confined by them? Do you wish you were in a different job, a different place, or a different relationship? Whatever your circumstances... This passage shows that if you stay faithful to God, you can experience his presence, his favor, and his blessing right where you are. We see here a contrast between Judah's unfaithfulness and hypocrisy and Joseph's faithfulness when faced with sexual temptation. Judah, vulnerable after the death of his wife, fell into sin. His own daughter-in-law, Tamar, posed as a prostitute, and he slept with her. As a pledge, he left his seal and its cord and a staff. She became pregnant by him. When he heard that his daughter-in-law was guilty of prostitution and as a result had become pregnant, Judah said, Bring her out and have her burned to death. She then produced what he'd left behind, the seal and cord and staff. Judah was caught out. He realized his own hypocrisy and sin. The grace of God is extraordinary. Perez, one of the sons born as a result of this incident, is listed in the genealogy of Jesus. In his grace, God takes what the devil intended for evil and uses it for good. Judah's sin is contrasted with Joseph's righteousness. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. Potiphar, who saw that the Lord was with him and had given him success in everything he did, put him in charge of his entire household. As a result, the Lord blessed his household. The expression, the Lord was with Joseph, appears four times in this passage. However, the fact that the Lord is with you does not stop you facing temptation. Joseph faced great temptation. Potiphar's wife, 
tried to entice him to come to bed with her. He absolutely refused. He saw that giving in to this temptation would be a sin against God and against his employer, Potiphar. How could I violate his trust and sin against God? Not only did he refuse to go to bed with her, he refused even to be anywhere near that temptation. Joseph shows us a great example of how to deal with temptation. The best way to resist temptation is to flee from it. If you're facing great temptation, take radical action. Like Joseph, run from it. Potiphar's wife grabbed Joseph by his cloak and said again, Come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. Look at the contrast with Judah. Judah left his seal, cord and staff in Tamar's hands. It was evidence of his guilt. Joseph left his cloak in Potiphar's wife's hand. She used it to prove his guilt, although in fact it was evidence of his innocence. In spite of the fact that the Lord was with Joseph, having resisted temptation, he then suffered terrible injustice and ended up confined in prison. He lost his liberty, but not his freedom. Even in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favour in the eyes of the prison warden. The head jailer put Joseph in charge of all the prisoners. He ended up managing the whole operation. Because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Your circumstances may not be ideal. You may feel like you're in prison. Literally in prison. Or confined like a prisoner in your job. A health issue a difficult relationship, or other circumstances. Yet in the midst of all this, if you stay faithful to God, you can experience His presence with you, His favor in the sight of others, and His blessing on your life. This is the pearl of great value. This is the most valuable thing in the world. Lord, Thank you that even when things seem to go wrong and there are trials and temptations, I can know that you are with me and experience your blessing on my life. Pepper adds, You can't keep a good person down. God was with Joseph even when everything went wrong. He didn't necessarily rescue him from it but he did use it for good. God was working on Joseph's character. It was all part of his preparation. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that I can stay faithful to you and that I can experience my presence with you every day of my life. I pray that I can keep my relationship with you is my number one priority this year. In Jesus' name, amen.